All right, Lando, so one of the newest and also coolest characters in the game. A character that, of course, has a lot of drama upon their official announcement with their SA3 and how it actually does work. But lucky for us, Caleb did actually go ahead and fix this character's SA3. And this overall makes him a really good character. Like, I really like the way they made him. And this is one of the few times as a... And this is one of the few times that I've ever really wanted and tried to get a mid-month character. Now, we are currently on my Guildmate Beans account. He actually did summon on the banner, got him 2-5. I'm going to be trying him out in Guildquest today to see how he actually does perform. Because what I like about this character and how they did design him is that, in a way, he is better than Bambietta. Obviously, Bambietta is the overall better character. But, like, Bambi's whole thing, too, is the barrage attack. Bambi was basically based around that. But the thing that when we showcase with Bambi is that she's very open to getting hit when using that SA2. And Toshiro basically fixes that problem. In his case, he can apply Freeze. That, of course, is going to stop the enemies from even thinking about attacking you. And at the same time, in combination with the SA3, it's a trap effect. It's going to inflict enemies with Freeze very easily. It's also now going to do a lot of damage since he actually does do damage on that SA3. And like, he himself also just has a like, really high damage output. I mean, he has full stamp here. He has like a 40% Berserker, 40% more damage to throws than enemies, more damage in guild quests. And then he also has the SP boost with Havoc. This character is insane for a mid-month. Now, with that said, does that mean you have to must summon for him? No, you can still go without him, but he is good to have. If you're a Toshiro fan, I'd say you lucked out getting this character because he's probably the best mid-month character in the entire game. And his design is cool. I'm a fan of it. With that said, though, let's take him into the very hard Quincy Stelmerator Guild Quest, the place this character was designed for, and see how he does perform. Now, Toshiro, again, to build him, we're going to use a T-Set, a Fortification Pill, and also a Masanga. He does have killer against all five characters, so this is important. When it comes to the links as always go with a mixture of recharge strong attack damage and full stamina is the best thing to do here and these right now are probably one of his best links that you can use yachu being a 20 percent sad and also 12 percent recharge also still the only character that released with two soul traits i'm very curious when that's next going to happen quincy to go giving us the enhanced recharge with strong attack damage and then chad being one of the best links in the entire game a free to play link at that too you love to see it his transcendence consists of sp 10 and focus 10 and keep in mind, he's perfectly fine at 1 out of 5. And his bonus abilities include full stamina and also weakened defense. You can definitely go with weakened defense or damage to frozen enemies. Damage to frozen might actually be better, but I just want to go with weakened defense. It's also what Beans put on the character itself. And again, I'm using his account, right? Now for our second character. Believe it or not, we're using Akon. Akon, again, has always just been a good support character, especially when paired with a really good speed sniper that can and wants to inflict stat damage. And that's exactly what Toshiro is. Now, Akon, in this case, does actually have killer. His SA3 at 2, the way it does work, if you position it correctly, which to be fair, in this case, we, we can't because it's an AI controlling this character, but Akon's not a bad character. The main reason why Akon is on the team, though, besides see himself doing some respectable damage, is that he busts our character. Like, look at this. 20% more strong attack damage to Toshiro, and then 40% more damage to enemies inflicted by an ailment. That's only to speed snipers, but that's exactly what Toshiro is. So Akon, for the most part, is basically Toshiro's best friend. In this case, very similar builds. Again, the character itself does type Quincy Killer, and once more, we're going with a mixture of, like, recharge, strong attack damage, and in this case, also using the Rookie Link, giving us full stamp and also strong attack damage. Now, Young Mortals are third character. Ideally, this is where you would want to put Maid Orihime, but Beans opt in to use this particular Yammer, more such because he himself can do some decent damage, even if his damage is cut in half, but he also does have complete stats immunity and a Vortex SA2, so that should help out on the crowd control aspects, and also because Akon is immune to status elements. Build is the exact same, once more with a mixture of recharge, full stamina, and also strong attack damage. And of course, since Toshiro is going to be constantly inflicting stats events, full stamina and damage to Frozen on Yamamoto is the play here. With that said, though, let's jump into the run. All right, then. So jumping into the quest, instantly we're going to flash dip forward, use our SA3. That's going to apply the freeze. And look at this. With the SA2, we instantly rinse through that boss's HP. And in this case, Bambiette is already frozen. We're definitely, I think we're going to start to see a bit more characters like this for the most part with the trap effects. Because this is where they get really good. So let's use our SA3 there in combination with the SA2 once more already going into the next wave. Unfortunately, the SA2 itself doesn't last as long. Yamamoto's already gone down. I think we need to kind of focus on killing all the mini mobs here. Let's use our SA1 there into the free. We apply the freeze. Let's use our SA2. Even though Eben is a Techni character, look how fast we killed him when we used the SA2. That is absolutely insane. Yama kind of just up here by himself. I think Akron's going to die. He's kind of getting bombarded in the corner there. We're just going to keep going to see how far we can actually go. Let's use our SA3 now. And then use our SA2. Kind of feels weird to see all these statements be removed. Let's use our Soul Bomb. 
and then SA1, and then I think finishing up with the SA2 will actually defeat the quest. This is my first time trying it, so we are on the slower side, but using the SA2 there, he basically gets defeated. I'm going to reset the run there, because I want to see if I can get a first run without using the five tickets that we have today. But you can basically see in this example, we did beat the quest with five seconds to spare. And it's kind of funny, I forgot I even had a Solom till the final boss. So Solom in the third wave, I think is the best play here, because that's what I believe where Akron and also Yamoto did end up dying. All right then, so let's try that once more. So again, we're going to go up, use our SA3, that applies the SP boost, then the SA2 goes off. Again, unfortunately, we cannot have it keep going into the next wave, right? So now we just kind of make sure we have to kill up the little mini mobs because they're kind of the annoying ones here. Aizen's or uh, Akron's SA2. I keep calling Akron Aizen. Let's use the SA2 there, enter the SA1. I don't want to use my SA3 just yet. There we go. That was fine. So SA1 there. Then let's use our Sobom into the SA2. That takes down Iban super quick. And then in this case, we can actually use our SA3. And that takes down pretty much mostly everyone. That's just one enemy left, which is fine. Then we use our SA2. Slowly but surely, we are beating it. Good pacing right now, though. Hopefully no one does die. Let's use our SA1. That's actually good. Even though, it, you know, we had a few seconds there, a bit slow time. It's actually really good because look at this. SA2 goes off, 16 seconds to spare. That is not too bad. Sometimes it's actually good to get the previous enemy. So in this case, waveform, kind of weak enough, but don't kill them. So it allows us to recharge some of our attacks. You know, had we actually defeated that enemy there on the fourth wave and then instantly went into the fifth wave, we would have no strong attacks ready. But luckily, we kind of stalled it out just enough. The SA3 came back, the SA2 came back. And again, that right there is a powerful combo. I love the idea of it. It's so smart. We've kind of come a decently far away right when trap mechanics came out. Mayuri kind of got crapped on it. Granted, his SA3 wasn't the best variation of that. But ever since then, we've seen two better variations. With Yachiru, of course, being a really good character. But having the 1170 AoE in front of her attached to it made it even better. And then now we have with Toshiro. It makes sense. It frees the enemy. And then, you know, a month ago, over a month ago, we saw the introduction of the barrage attack. And we knew it would get better over time. You know, the character was given a statement that could be weakening, paralysis, or freeze, and also have poise for example that would be like the best variation of it but that sa2 barrage attack in combination with the sa3 trap it just makes sense and it's a powerful combo especially for gilchrist content it's crazy in my opinion to see that get put onto a mid month character you know, you could say this is an attempt for Killer to make a summon for mid-mumps. It definitely is. And the mid bump banners have been getting better. Having said that, if you're watching this video, I don't encourage you to summon. I still recommend skipping it and then save for end of month. But I kind of like the idea that mid month characters can actually be viable now. Most of the time, they're just not really worth talking about. This Toshiro definitely is worth talking about. Let's try that again, though, right? Can we get a very similar clear time? I'd like to think so. So we're going to go up here. We're going to use our SA3. We're going to flash it about the way. Then use our SA2 to take them down. Let's go up here. Push down with the SA1. That actually freezes Bambietti. You'll have to see it. Unfortunately, again, this is the reason why you would want to use Maid Orihime if you had some. Is that our teammates are actually, you know, dying, right? So let's see how far we can potentially go with our Akon. Maybe we can still beat it. I'd like to think so. Maybe not, though. We are losing out on a bit of DPS, right? So again, I could use my SA2 here. But I kind of want to save for the next phase. I choose our SA1. Yama can still do respect amount of damage here, right? So we'll just keep it going. Having a melee collision attack on Toshiro would have been a lot better here. Because you can see, right? If we rely on doing damage against one strong attack, it kind of slows down the run a tad bit, right? Especially when your teammates do die. Let's see how far we can go, though. SA2 goes off. Do we? Oh, I... I I actually, I can't believe I just missed my SA2. She's right there. It's hard to see her. The freeze, it makes it hard to see. I hate freeze, I'm telling you. All right, with that said, though, I think it's time to wrap it up. Let's just get another quick and easy clear. The freeze goes off on Ryukun. Here we go. We're going to push the enemies down with the SA1. We apply the freeze. Hopefully, no one died. We took a few hits. Took a few hits. But let's finish up with the SA2 on Bambi. Not too bad. We didn't have the freeze applied there, but honestly, it does the job. Yama did use the SA2, right? Kind of a cool sob on though. Let's do that into the three. Into the one. Slowly but surely we are defeating him here. Now we don't have an SA3 to follow up. But let's just use our SA2. That should do decent. SA2 also has a good chance of freezing. Unfortunately there it didn't though. But it's fine. I think we can still actually finish this by ourselves. Let's use our SA2. Can is going to go down. And we are now on the final boss. So let's just drag everyone into the corner. Unfortunately somehow I got hit. Can we still finish it? It'd be impressive if we can. We most likely are. SA3 into the two. We lost our full stamp. Still did a massive amount of damage with that. It's going to come down to the last second, though. 
Maybe. Does the SA1 finish up? It didn't. But it froze. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna we're gonna take that. We're gonna take that. We got a pretty respectable clear time. You know, we've got like a what a 40 second run. Toshiro's wings are massive. Damn it. Is that the biggest it's ever been? I'm not too sure. But even in that case, that just kind of goes to show how strong Toshiro is when it comes to Guild Quest content. Even though we did take damage, even though we did lose two of our teammates, even though we won't be using a booster with Mate or Hime, which really would have helped it to provide some extra good crowd control, safety, survivability, we still managed to be there. And remember, this is only a mid month character. You don't expect this from mid month characters. But Caleb is stepping up on these mid month characters. Even Momo, which we are going to showcase in a few days' time, she's even pretty good for a farming character, right? She does her job, which is to farm content, and she's a great character doing that. If this is what we're getting for mid-month, I'm kind of looking forward to see what we are going to get for end of month, right? Because remember, even though this character and also Mama are really good, end of month, as always, are going to be better. With that said, though, hope you guys enjoyed this showcase video with Toshiro. I was very curious. I'm sure you guys were too on how he does perform since he was designed for this mode. Really happy to see that his SA3 actually can now do damage. Honestly, if the SA3 didn't do damage, I think this character would have been absolutely mediocre. But luckily, we are in the correct timeline. It does do damage, and I think he's a solid character. One of the better mid-months, if not the best mid-month. Let me know how you guys feel about this character in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, and peace.